Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome Hi. to Dice Jailers. I'm Jordan. I'm Bjorn. And this week, we are going to talk about the multifaceted new boys on the block, the Artificers. That is right. The Leathermen of D&D. Yes. Uh, and one of the, like, the only official uh, additional class to D&D yeah. 5th edition. There's also... I mean, there's also the Blood Hunter, which is like unofficial uh, critical role stuff, which we will do next week. Uh, yes. But this week, the only official add-on class for 5th edition so far, the Artificers. And it's a weird one. It really is. But before we talk about any of that, yeah. uh, do we have any announcements? I know we have one because we finally picked a day. But... We do. We have a big mm -hmm. announcement. Yep. It's gonna Would be you like to say up? it or... Just over two weeks. I'm double checking right now that I have the correct date. Right. <laughs> Saturday, <laughs> April 17th. I'm glad I yes. checked. I almost said 15th, but that's two weeks from today. Nope, that's, that's tax yeah. day. And that's not what we're here to talk about. Nope. No. Uh, April 17th, we will be having our second ever one shot streamed right here. Uh, I have it narrowed down to two different one shots to pick mm -hmm. from. And we're going to get Jordan and a couple other players together. And I'm going to run it. And it's going to be a good time. So come hang out with us for a couple hours. And we'll try yep. and actually be good and have a break at the one hour point this time around. <laughs> we'll try. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we went two hours straight through last time. And it was fun. But we'll try and actually have a break. And yeah, come come check it out. It'll be good. I can guarantee the players we have will be uh, fun and good at D&D. &D and Very nice. And... If you don't like me as a DM, then send people you hate to watch it, and I will bore them. And if you love yeah. me as a DM, then please come and hang out and say stuff in the chat and talk about how pretty my hair is. That's, I mean, that could be a full episode on its own. <laughs> I'm for it. Like, if we want to have an episode about my hair, <laughs> just I'm that level of vain. <laughs> I'll admit it. Well, you think this song is about you. I uh... do. I do. <laughs> oh, we, Carly, we go way back. We go way back. So... Uh, Everybody what, thought it was about Warren Beatty. <laughs> thought it was about Warren Beatty, but you have to reverse those initials. It wasn't WB. It was BW. It's about me. Even I, though I, I wasn't mean, born yet, she knew. Carly I Simon feel like knew. I feel like that's a stretch, but I love it. You know what? I, I you know I pulled something. That's how much of a stretch. <laughs> uh, any, anything new going on in your life, bud? How you doing? Ah, uh, man. Um. Right now, a lot of my downtime is spent starting writing uh, our next campaign, actually. Since mm -hmm. uh, I've, I figured out the timeline for this one, I think we're going to end probably June, July-ish. And then my thought is take maybe a month or two off before we start playing again. Because mm -hmm. I don't know about you, I think there will be a lot of feelings when this ends. Oh, yeah. Because this has been a pretty epic story. At that point, it'll be almost three years of our lives invested mm -hmm. in this. And I yeah. don't think anyone's going to be ready the next day to be like, well, I'm rolling up a new character. Let's just <laughs> like, we're going to, we're going to have a lot to process, but I mean, we've been, we've been bro growing that story about as long as I've been growing my hair. That's true. That is true. <laughs> and so, yeah, I've, I've been spending a lot of time uh, writing on that. Um, the Shakespeare company I work with, we're about to make our decision on whether or not we're going to have a at live season this summer. Spoiler alert, I'm pretty sure we're not going to. I, I'm just not comfortable with it, nor are the directors. And mm -hmm. the fact that the last thing I read from the CDC said they expect small gatherings by July 4th. Um, our season would begin outdoors in the middle of June. Those timelines don't work. And no. so we've come up with uh, some cool plan Bs for what we can do for entertainment. We're actually in the process of working on a podcast, which will incorporate um, sort of audio versions of some plays to do them as radio dramas. So that's going to be that project. And that's then, a lot. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's going to be cool. We, got, we have a lot of ideas, a lot of people who want to work on this podcast. One of our board members just did the research for the equipment we need to buy for it like mm -hmm. she has done podcasting stuff she knows the audio equipment so this isn't the standard thing of like 10 people that get together and go let's make a podcast kids and no one oh you them. mean like we did with this show uh, yeah but at least we kind of <laughs> knew what we were doing and that we knew how to put something on the internet um I, that's a low bar bud <laughs> yeah you know hey sometimes it's what it takes but yeah uh we figured out the equipment we need and so uh we'll be going forward from there and it'll be great 
And so between writing my next campaign and uh, cutting scripts for that, I have had my face either in a Dungeons and Dragons book or a Shakespeare book. And I'm not complaining at all. Like <laughs> I'm so focused on my two biggest hobbies right now. This is a great time for me. I love it. What do you got going boss? I, I mean, a whole lot. I'm playing a whole lot of the waiting game right now. Uh, sure. Cause like I, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for tomorrow to happen because yep. uh, I got, I, I oh, got, yeah, my, got my second round. Yeah, I got my second round of the vaccine uh, earlier this poking. morning, so uh, I can feel my sinuses starting to fill up already. Uh, it's great. It's wonderful. And I will probably lose track of all of my brain during this stream, so it's that'll possible. be fun. It is entirely <laughs> possible. Uh, but yeah, a whole lot a whole lot of things are just kind of hurry up and wait, because uh, I'm sure. just, I'm waiting for it to be safe to do shows again. Yeah. I, I'm just kind of rolling around for my next just waiting for my next D games you know it's uh I'm, I'm doing a whole lot of nothing I'm like <laughs> i got beat saber baby <laughs> hey, hey that's something that is something and you got but a yeah. sweet ass shirt on uh yes i do because it's got to reflect the classics uh right. oh i'm also waiting for uh, uh andrew shanks friend of the show been on the show uh yep. Love to get him in on the uh, on the one shot, but he's working. Uh, his podcast, The Ugly Radio, uh, season two. He did the whole big official announcement uh, with the date of when it's starting, uh, and I don't remember it off the top of my head. But I don't remember most things off the top of my head right now. So, Accurate. yeah. Uh, but you know, check out stuff for The Ugly Radio because he just did the big announcement. He's got a trailer video. Uh, it's it's just it's just really dope. And like I'm I'm in at least two of the episodes for this season uh i I can't i can't really confirm or deny more than that uh (laughs) but yeah it's it's gonna be some super rad stuff and he's got a lot of really cool ideas and things shaping up for the season that haven't been announced so i can't really talk about them but it's dope oh that's good like sometimes you get ideas and from those ideas you can just put stuff together Yep, and sometimes you just got to take all these random scattered ideas and you put them all together into something, and it's good, kind of like this show. Uh, I know. <laughs> but also, exactly better what? Better than we thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could say that we're both uh, D&D web show artificers, the way we, we put could. this together. <laughs> you could. That's a fucking stretch, <laughs> but you could say that. <laughs> you could certainly try. <laughs> ah, the artificer. This is a, this is a weird class and yeah when i first read it over i i had a lot of thoughts and responses to it and they really oscillated between highs and lows like, yeah the first the very first thing i saw and this won't shock you at all was a d8 hit die and i went yeah okay okay if i make one of these my character is going to have some hit points and i saw it was a caster and i, and I thought and i instantly thought oh this is great bard cleric druid i know casters that have a d8 nope not like this it is not like that at all your spells do not scale that fast you do not get that many cantrips don't walk into this thinking i'm a wizard with a d8 hit die no not at all you uh, artificers first and foremost your things as an artificer are the things that you create uh the artificer the subclass is i i would say except for the different classes that get their their subclass choice at level one yep this uh, this class has the most like your abilities are tied the hardest to your subclass i i completely agree um you know much like how we talked about with the wizard where level one in particular absolutely sucks to play and at level two to some extent though it's not as bad like a, a level one wizard i think is a borderline unplayable character because of how yeah. little it can do i feel the artificer is actually in that same boat oh, Levels, absolutely level one in particular you can do next to nothing and you get a yeah. little bit at level two not a ton it's when you hit level three where you get your mm-hmm. archetype that this class begins to sing yes um, level two is all right because you've got your first infusions yeah so which infusions do- are dope and, and really look over those. The Artificer is for that creative, out-of-the-box character. The one who mm-hmm. always like, likes to ask the DM, hey, can I do this? Yep. Who goes, okay, so with this alchemy jug, 
I realized it can make so much oil. Now, could I use that oil to A, B, C, and X, Y, Z? Like, I'm that so is... glad that you didn't go with the 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 mayonnaise example with the alchemy. Well, show. okay, the, but the the mayonnaise <laughs> works too. Like, a, just a very 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 short story on that. I was on a set. Uh, filming a web series where we had this light that was on a rotating boom that needed to go over our heads and it squeaked and we didn't have anything like WD-40 but there was mayonnaise in the fridge and the AD took mayonnaise on the th yeah on the thread put it on there it, it works but I mean hey from what I understood, I was I I only didn't have very much to film that day. I was offset long before it started stinking. Uh, that, apparently, yeah. yeah. Apparently, when it got near the end of the day, it started to get a little ripe, and then they had someone who was on hand who who washed and cleaned the equipment. But but the thing is, yeah. that worked. Like that level of MacGyver, where we went, this is squeaking. The audio is picking it up. If we don't make it stop squeak squeaking, this is unfilmable. Yeah. And they and they didn't want to waste anybody's time. So and they that, that kind of that kind of MacGyvering is really what artificers get to. Exactly. Like, look, look at those things you can infuse. Because you look at those magic items at level two. They're, for the most part, nothing to write home about. None of them. No, but a lot of them are, like, in that, in that realm of, like, I'm not going to go looking for it, but it'd be useful to have. Exactly. Like, you don't look at these and go, oh, man, I'm so excited that I can create an alchemy jug like the most exciting one is probably the free bag of holding you can get because yep. who doesn't need a bag of holding everybody but, needs a bag of holding yeah like if all of a sudden the idea is like oh this thing might be at the bottom of this lake cap of water breathing hey yeah i can't see in the dark goggles of night i mean there are a lot of really useful items here that maybe you don't need that often so you can just infuse them for the day you need them and that's that is where the artificer begins yep. to sing. If, it's if you're also play... with artificer, uh, a thing that is often overlooked is the magical tinkering, yes. which is just a little things. And admittedly, in our campaign, I use them for just shenanigans, but sure. they can be used for actual useful things. They can, but like for I, me, I think like using them for... I was gonna say, like, using them for the shenanigans though is is is, is, is it's fun. It adds yeah. flavor. It makes the game. You get to laugh. Yeah. Like, to, to let you all in on that, uh, my character, who's a, a multi-class fighter artificer, which, not a great multi-class to choose, but it made sense for the character. It's so um, interesting, though. Uh, my, like, I have four things that I can have magical tinkered. One of them is a message to my character's sister. Yep. One of them is a is a message for a very, very powerful person that's connected to my character's sister. And yep. the other two are a whoopee cushion and a rock that burps. Which, you know what? It's it's ridiculous, but but it's fun. Um, yeah. And you can really so, get a lot of that fun with artificers. Yeah. So so looking at the artificer out of the gate, like let's let's start and talk about some of the things you get. You get some really good proficiencies out of the gate. You, you get do. light and medium armor. You get shields, which means you can have yourself a decent armor class fairly quickly. Um, mm -hmm. You only get simple weapons, but this isn't a class that's likely to be up in melee anyways, unless you're unless a, you're a battlesmith, yeah, or an or an armorer, you might be. Yeah. But from the get go, you're probably not going to be. So you got some simple weapons. Uh, you're probably going to be using a, a, a light crossbow for your ranged attacks if you're not yep. using your cantrips. And you can start with scale mail, which isn't so bad. So that's the other nice thing. You don't really have to worry about dexterity with this No, class. not for this class, which, yeah. is, which is nice. Because you're a spellcaster, you really don't have to worry about strength that much either. No. Your, your saving throws are constitution and intelligence. Uh, as always, uh, I say con is not a dump stat, so... I mean, sometimes it is with the artificer, and it's a toss-up. Yeah. Um, your intelligence is going to be your highest stat. That's what your spells run off of. Yep. But what's great is because you have all these skills, I think as an artificer, you could dump strength, you could dump charisma, you could have a low dexterity, and only worry about intelligence, constitution, wisdom, and have a very playable character. Mm-hmm. 
because you really get to because we've, we've talked about in other classes tying your other stats to personality yeah. and for for artificer you can really tie your other stats to your uh to your skills that you want that you want to focus on you can. And, I would say, and you get so many millions of skill proficiencies yeah you do and and the one place where you may want a little dexterity because you do get proficiency in thieves tools um which which is great you get thieves mm -hmm. tools tinkerers tools and one other type of artisans tools of your choice mm -hmm. which most of those are just for flavor but it's it's a great thing to think about and figure out one that might be good the thing to and remember is you have you don't in yeah, that thieves you, tool so you don't necessarily need to worry about having high decks you're going to mm -hmm. add your proficiency mod and remember that just because you can pick whatever other artisan's tool it is doesn't mean you always have to choose brewing supplies but you're going to choose brewing supplies <laughs> probably like but you don't need to you don't need to but you probably want to but it's it's one of at least from what i've seen it's one of the most chosen like uh you know uh uh what's the word i'm looking for oh the one of the artisans tools yeah people uh, yeah. love that People so, just love being like, yep, my character knows how to make booze, even though you never will. <laughs> yeah, which is great. Um, You'll never have downtime like that. I'm sorry. For your cantrips, that, that's one place where you only get two to start. You don't even get your third until level 10. Yeah. And it's like, for an, for an, for an artificer, it's like, okay, for your cantrips, what are you going to take besides mending? That's... Because you're no matter what you choose, you're probably gonna want mending. I, I guess if you're an alchemist, maybe you don't need mending. Yeah. But otherwise, you're gonna need mending. Um, level three, right tool for the job. It's great. You don't have a yep. set of tools, you can create them. Level six is where I get excited about yeah. artificers because you get your tool expertise. Now, you get to double your proficiency bonus on anything. Mm -hmm. So you have expertise in all tools you're proficient with. This is where you start to take that next level. And then level seven. Flash, the flash of, of genius. This is yeah. the coolest one. Oh, and I, I didn't mention the coolest thing, in my opinion, about artificers. Go. Uh, as a class in general. And that is that it specifically says in the uh, in the text about your spell casting. Your spell casting isn't just like, and I weave these things and magic. It's yeah, you it's made not. a gadget yes. to replicate the spell. And that's the How coolest thing for me because I, I always love random like flavor stuff because I'm shenanigans. Sure. But like like I remember I uh, I gave my character like what was it was some uh move speed boosting spell. Sure. And I and I remember I described it as it's a magical knee brace. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was expeditious retreat. Yeah, yeah, that was it. And then yeah, like it was a and like knee brace. Yeah, like casting sea invisibility. My character has some disposable contacts. <laughs> for uh, for Featherfall, you gave people a crash pad. Yep. Uh, and, or or a parachute, depending on. Yeah, and and that to me, that's really where the fun of this comes in in the role yeah. play of describing how, how you come up with these. Um. But yeah, that, that level seven ability, Flash of Genius, mm -hmm. you get to, for your reaction, when yourself or creature you see within 30 feet, you can add your intelligence modifier to their saving throw. Yep. This is huge. It's so big. Anything that modifies saving throws, to me, in D&D &D 5e, is oh, one yeah. of the most powerful things. Because there's so they many don't spells. happen that often. Yeah, and there's so many spells and abilities out there that can just wreck you just oh, yeah. wreck you and uh, from something as, as simple as a basilisk's gaze to turn you to stone to the bodax eyesight to drop you to zero bodax. hit points i love bodax they're Fucking great bodax to maybe getting hit by disintegrate yeah I mean, we're talking a spell that if it reduces you to zero you're dead and you're dead. there's no body so resurrecting you is really hard and if you have that player that is low on health that got hit by disintegrate and they failed it by only one or two, you can use flash of genius, add your intelligence mod to that and your level seven, which means at that point, 
your intelligence mod should probably be at least a plus four. Mm -hmm. If you didn't take the ASI at level four to increase your intelligence from 16 to 18, I don't understand you, but that's only because that's different from how I play. Yep. If you didn't, maybe you took a cool feat and you're like, well, no, I can do this thing. I'm like, but your, your spells yep. and, the, and the whole thing. Cause maybe you I took, get one. Yeah. Maybe you took sharpshooter feet because you're being an artillerist and it's ridiculous with the artillerist. Let me just tell you it that. Really is. Um, it really is. You know, a lot of fun with that. Um, so actually, you, you mentioned one of the subclasses. Like, um, well, actually, I would say before we do that, the, the one other thing with the Artificer that I think is really fun to mention is mm -hmm. uh, when you hit level 10, you can now attune up to four items at once. That will eventually increase to six items. And when you hit level 14, you get to ignore all class, race, spell, and level requirements to attuning or using a magic item. Yeah. Your artificer can wield a holy avenger while also having a yeah. robe of the arch magi. There's no like, there might not be a reason to do it, but you could. Yes, and you could have up to six magical items attuned when you hit level eighteen, yeah. and then finally the capstone ability. You get a plus one to all saving throws per magic item you're currently attuned to. Yep. If you're not attuned to six things, get attuned to six things. I mean, your now... your infusions will use up your attunement slots. Yeah. So, boom. Just do it. And, and now all of a sudden, oh, I have a plus six to all saving throws on top of whatever I had. Yep. You will have, if you're, you also have a wizard in the party with you, your intelligent saving throw will eclipse the wizards. And you're going to piss off the wizard, which is great. It's going to be really funny. Yeah. Your wizard's going to wonder, like, wait a minute. I spent my entire life studying the arcane and your intelligence save is six higher than mine. How? Yeah. Cause I made a thing. Yeah. You're going to have <laughs> paladins looking at you going like, well, I only, you know, I get to offer a plus five cause of my charisma mod. And, and granted they get to offer it to more people cause of their aura, depending on their oath. Yeah. This is, this is great. But artificer just shows up and says my character's catchphrase. <clears throat> Uh, so I made this thing. And, and, and it, it's amazing. Like, I <laughs> I love, love, love the Artificer. Um, uh, again, Let's talk about these subclasses, though. Yeah, okay. So, I know we usually go, here's stuff I like, here's stuff I hate, in that mm -hmm. order. I want to get out of the way the one subclass I have beef with. Okay. It's the Alchemist. Um, okay. The I did want to talk about the Alchemist, so... Yeah. The Alchemist is fun. There are a lot of things I, I like about it. Uh, you gain proficiency with Alchemist supplies. And if you already have the proficiency, you get proficiency with a different type of artisan's tools. Yeah. Again, more stuff. Um, for the spell list, you get Healing Word, which, great spell. Healing um, Word is big. It's, it's a bonus action. It raises a downed ally. It's super good. It's the experimental elixir where I have a problem. And okay. here, here's where my problem is. Um, now you get to you get to make one for free yep. each day. It's great. You just create one and there you go. And you can spend spell slots to create more. Um, now, and as you level up, you get to create, you know, you one at level three, two at level six, and three at 15th level. But the thing is, you roll on the experimental yeah. elixir table for what you get. And this is where I think this class falls, this subclass falls short. It's just mm -hmm. because for the other artificer stuff, when you're building it, you're not rolling for that stuff. It's not like the artillerist right. rolls for what their arcane cannon is. Uh, they, you they, just they make, make it. Yeah. And here's the thing. Swiftness. Walking speed increases by 10 feet for one hour. That is, I will very rarely have any use for that. Um, flight, a flying speed of 10 feet for 10 minutes. I will very rarely have a use for that. Um, transformation, you get alter self and it lasts for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Now, <laughs> that's not bad, but again, it's situational. The healing I would always want. The resilience, mm -hmm. I could see myself wanting quite often because it's plus one AC for 10 yeah. minutes. That's pretty good. And 
the boldness that one again it sounds great you can add a d4 to the number rolled for every attack and saving throw but that lasts for, for one a minute. minute and it only targets one thing and so that is my only issue with the alchemist is mm -hmm. you roll on this table and half of them are so situational that i can't see myself regularly wanting them um that is my one gripe because yeah, the fifth it, level it, feature it does it does need some balance in that way the thing yeah. that the thing that really is interesting for me about the alchemist subclass is that like in in past editions of D D and other pen and papers alchemist is just its own class with yes. its own subclasses yes and so like i i understand wanting to get the alchemist into fifth edition but it, it seems like a disservice to it to not like bring it in as its own class later yeah I, like for me no matter what class you're playing whatever subclass you take whatever you get when you first take that and for most subclasses that's level three if you don't get something that excites you at level three it's a really hard sell for me because mm -hmm. of how many adventures stay at lower levels now the alchemical savant at fifth level oh, where yeah. you can gain bonuses to rolls of spells that's great the, the the ninth level restorative reagents whenever an experimental elixir is consumed the creature gains temporary hit points mm -hmm. that's great and you get a free lesser yeah. restoration equal a number of Which, times and and that's really long. nice because the usually the ninth level ability isn't all that exciting yeah so there are some things where I go, okay, the alchemist is really good. It's just that level three thing, your bread and butter. Hey, experimental elixir, the fact you have to roll for it, it, it just irks me a bit. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, that reason alone, I have a little bit of an issue with it. I think as long as a player is creative enough to make those other ones useful, they can have fun with this. But this is a class I don't think becomes that useful until you hit fifth level. And I have a hard time getting behind that. I, I, I can see that. It's it's definitely one of those, like if you're if you're playing like either a game that starts at level one and you know you're playing a pre written campaign that doesn't go up very high. Yeah. Uh it's one you may want to avoid unless it's really important for the story you're wanting to play. Yeah, but I, yeah, I it is definitely one of those ones that like, while everyone else is having more of their fun stuff at low levels already, you're waiting to level five. Yeah. Like I, I wouldn't play that for Lost Mine of Fandelver or Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. I just no. Yay. The, the, the healing word is great and your party will find it very useful. But again, you have so few spell slots but yeah, and you don't you don't get your fun stuff. One. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't think a player would have a whole lot of fun with that. So that's the only one where I say I don't love it because I think it takes a little too long mm -hmm. to get going. Now, as we go down the alphabet, we get it is to a, one I'm uh, really excited one, about. Before we move on, okay. Uh, one thing with the alchemist is that yes, the alchemist is uh, for you DMs. The alchemist is a very good NPC class. Yes, it is. It is yes, a very, is. very good NPC class. Oh and man, you could you could have this weirdo giving them potions, being like, "Well, I don't quite know what it does." Exactly. I mean, that's great as long yeah. as they know this is an ally they can trust. Let them drink it and just see what the hell happens. Mm -hmm. Like, and that and uh, that that is really where the the alchemist shines. Yeah, is either at high levels or as an NPC. Oh, it's a great NPC. It's a yeah. great NPC. Have that be the one who's giving them you know, what one potion before they go into battle and you just tell your players, you know, it will do something not bad. Yep. And they can consume it when they want to. And maybe it gives them a fly speed of 10 feet. Maybe it increases their armor class. Who knows? <laughs> maybe it makes them look like someone else. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I love yeah. it. So no, I, yeah, I could not but agree yeah. more. It's a great well, piece of class. Yeah. But let's let's head on down further uh through the alphabet. Uh and let's let's talk about the armorer. The armorer oh is the Oh my gods, do I love the armorer. And the armorer is new even for artificer. 
Yeah, this one came out in Tasha's. Mm -hmm. And the so armor. I mean, oh. you're Iron Man. You're Iron Man. Like, <laughs> you're, you're just, you're Iron Man. You're Iron Man. And it's great. <laughs> so first thing, you gain proficiency with heavy armor. Remember how I said you don't really care about your dexterity? You extra don't care about your dexterity now. Because you can have plate armor. You get proficiency mm -hmm. with Smith's tools. That's fun. And then looking at the spells you get. Okay, third level. Magic Missile and Thunder Wave. This is clearly okay. a archetype that is meant to bring some pain. Fifth level, Mirror Image and Shatter. Shatter, also known as the Poor Man's Fireball. Yep. Um, and then at ninth level, Hypnotic Pattern and Lightning Bolt. Uh, hypnotic lightning pattern, Bolt. Oh, Lightning Bolt, great damage spell. <laughs> uh, hypnotic Pattern, great crowd control spell. The mm -hmm. 13th and 17th level spells, I don't I don't worry about those too much. I mean, Fire actually, Shield's pretty fun. Okay, greater Invisibility is a great spell. It's just most campaigns don't get beyond like 10th or 12th level. Yeah. So that's where I stop looking at most features. But, but Iron Man with Wall of Force. Which is great. <laughs> you're just, you're just, uh, I mean, at that point, you are a metal god. Because uh, you get that at 17th level. So yeah. you're a metal god. And then you can wall of force and just trap somebody in a ring with you. Oh, and, and here's another thing that's great. So it, arcane armor, where it's like you can take a suit of armor and turn it into arcane armor as long as you have smith's tools. And here's my favorite thing is the first bullet point is saying that, that armor usually has a strength requirement. You don't have that uh, requirement because it's arcane armor. Which again, remember how I said you can dump strength? You can you now can wear plate strength. armor no matter what your strength score is. Why? Because you're Iron Man. Your arcane armor can be your spell casting focus. Why? Because, because you're, you're Iron, Iron Man. Man. <laughs> it's so good. You can retract or deploy the helmet as a bonus action. The armor replaces any missing limbs functioning identically to a limb it replaces. And you can don or doff the armor as an action. This is so cool. It's it's just, it's the briefcase suit. Yeah, It's it the is. Iron Man 2 briefcase suit. It really yeah. is. And you, you can choose different types of, of armor. And it even says that each model of armor has a special weapon. And you add your intelligence mod instead of strength or dex to attack and damage rolls. Yep. Why? Because you're, you're Iron, Iron Man. Man. <laughs> um, for me, the Guardian. You're designed to be on the front line. You get thunder gauntlets. You get a defensive field. This is so awesome. See, I love and, it. And I go the other way. Uh, I, I personally prefer the infiltrator suit. Sure you do. Uh, and that that's just because me as a person, I generally like uh, to be the Dexy boy. Well, here's the thing. You have to take that infiltrator one because you dumped Khan. You don't have enough hit points to stand on the front line. Rude. Tell me I'm Also, wrong. don't need to stand on the front line because that's what the barbarian's for. I want to stand next to the barbarian. Ooh, the barbarian. I can talk about barbarians. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I love the armor. And honestly, while the Infiltrator one doesn't appeal so much to me just because of how I play, I effing love that it has that dampening field ability where it's like, mm -hmm. oh, hey, you get advantage on stealth checks. If the armor normally imposes disadvantage, advantage and disadvantage cancel each other as normal. Meaning you can wear plate armor and decide, you know what, I'm going to have some decent decks here. I want to be really stealthy. You can wear heavy armor and not have and disadvantage on stealth checks, which is huge. Oh, yeah. Because, you you know, you can have someone with a relatively good armor class with the rogue, just in case something bad happens. Exactly. Uh, fifth level feature, you get extra attack on the attack action. You probably won't use that a ton. Probably not. But, yeah. you know, it's there. <laughs> exactly. Um, the, the nice thing is, because both of these has a special weapon to them, those mm -hmm. use the attack action. Meaning you can use your Thunder Gauntlets or Lightning Launcher twice. 
you don't have to look at that stupid crossbow ever again. Nope, you really don't. <laughs> um, you can now use your armor f- uh, for infusions, specifically to modify yep. the armor. Which Again, that is super cool because then you can you can have the, you know the infusion that is like, hey, the infusion that gives you a plus one to your AC. Boom, right on your magic armor. Yep. Uh, you've because got Iron Man. Yeah, you've got the uh, other infusion that's just a straight plus one to plus one to damage right on the armor, like you can add uh the infusion of being able to build eventually the boots of flying and then you're really iron man yeah it's like <laughs> the the armorer is is so awesome i i think it's a great great class uh great subclass for anyone who wants to play that intelligent character who can kick ass like i'm mean, straight up like iron man it, yeah. You, you want to be Tony Stark? You can be you can be Tony Stark with this, and it's yep. it's great because so often when we create our D and D characters, we create um, physically improved versions of ourselves. Uh, mm-hmm. Like my favorite character I've ever created was my half orc barbarian. I'm not nearly seven feet tall with these massive rippling muscles and ability no. to to wield a great axe for days on end. But I, I enjoy that type of character. But um, I'm I'm not an unintelligent person. I could create an artificer as an armorer based a hundred percent off of myself as a nearly 40 year old man and have it work in this world Mm -hmm. with no issue whatsoever. I don't have to change a damn thing. And and speaking on, on that one, uh, that's what the biggest reason why the art, the, the armorer is like my favorite of favorite of the artificer subclasses is also because like thinking about like if you wanted to take yourself as a person and put it into a character if you have some if you have accessibility needs like if you have had a leg amputated or an arm amputated or something because of whatever myriad of ways that can happen yeah. you can make that into your character into this armorer and have it be part of your story that your prosthetic is part of your armor and that's Which amazing is so cool and, and, and the thing that it says about the armor, too, it doesn't say that the armor is bipedal. So if maybe you're in a wheelchair and you're like, no, my battle armor has a wheelchair. And if I'm your DM, I'm going to say, hell yeah, hell yes, that's dope. Tell me more about your wheelchair armor. I want to hear this. Right. Like, that That's it, so cool. It so, yeah, opens like, that up to just so much cool stuff and, and so much better representation for all of life, which we always want in our fantasy games. because. Yeah. Who wants to play just a bunch of blonde white elves forever? I mean, because so. I mean, it, it gets boring. Like when, when I'm a DM, I want my players to love their characters mm-hmm. because if you love your character as a player, me as a DM, I'm I'm going to love your character. It, it, Absolutely, it's, it's going to happen because you're building a story together. And so often, people with accessibility needs get ignored in representation in many ways or mm-hmm. their accessibility needs are always looked at as something that they're sad about or, or wanting to improve right what i just fucking love about the artificer again specifically the armorer you can be somebody who is disabled who has accessibility needs make a character that is exactly you and fit that right in with this and that's not to say you can't do that with other classes like no you absolutely can the it's just, wheelchair it's just is out perfectly, there. yeah, it's just with the armor, it's perfectly built in to be a part of that. Yeah, I think the armor is perfect to be, to be the proxy of the person behind the character sheet. Mm-hmm. Like, let's be honest, most of us playing D&D have no business going out there fighting alongside great and powerful adventurers. Yeah. We don't have those ability scores. But I'm going to say we all have a certain level of intelligence because we have imagination. Mm-hmm. and that's where i go you can step into the skin of your artificer and be that armorer and you could straight up make yourself you could full on connecticut yankee and king arthur's court absolute character like if you did that if you're like i want my character to be from 2021 seattle washington that got pulled through space and time and is here but has these yeah. abilities i'll be like let's go let's i mean do this. if you've got gadgets for it here we are 
<laughs> Make it be your iPhone, man. <laughs> just just casting sending is just pulling out an iPhone. It's sending a text. <laughs> It's so dumb, but it's so true. It's dumb, but it's fun. It's identify Google. It is. is. Oh, man. I want to make this character now. Oh, my God. This is fun. Yeah. yeah. Artificers are are just, they, artificers all just lend themselves to fun. I mean, even with the alchemist, because you can be that, you can be that crazy, like, almost prospector brewer, just like, I don't know what this is going to be, but here you go, drink it. <laughs> or you can be a douchey bartender who only calls himself a mixologist. No. No, you can't. <laughs> no, get out of my game. <laughs> yeah. The, that's, the armor, that's where I draw the line. Uh, fair. The, the armor is just so much fun. And whether you go guardian or infiltrator, you're going to have a damn good time oh yeah um they're both really good at what they do the one caveat i would say is if you're going to play the, the guardian you do have to remember you have a d8 hit die yeah you're not that tanky <laughs> yeah you, you cannot be the tank you can fight alongside the tank and you can tank in an emergency because mm -hmm. i don't care how tough your barbarian is there is going to be a point where they start running out of hit points. It takes it'll a while, happen. but it'll happen. Yeah. But if you have that secondary tank who's able to come in in that moment of need and stand beside the barbarian to hold back forces, it's cool. It makes a great dramatic moment. And who it knows? It really does. You may build a romance between those characters. Yep. And I mean, if it's, if it's with your barbarian, that's going to happen. Well... My barbarian would, because my barbarian uh, was attracted to physical strength and not intelligence. That's he's fair. In, he's intimidated by intelligence, but physical strength loves that. Yeah. He loves that. Does not care about your gender or lineage. Just cares if you're strong. Yep. Which, uh, mood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's, let's move on down the list. And I know we normally do, like, we like this subclass, we dislike this subclass, but... There are only four with the artif Artificer, so we can really That's go it, through man. all of them. Uh, and so let's go to the Artificer subclass that is not going to stand next to the Barbarian. No. The Artillerist. This one is cool. I This one is the, is the subclass that first drew me to the Artificer before the, uh, before the Armorer was released. And I you was like, what? give me this one, because I want big magic guns. Uh, you know what? I'll say same. The only thing about this uh, subclass that confuses me is the tool proficiency gets wood carver's tools. And I just feel like it's there because they went like, oh, crap, we got to give it something. Yeah, it really is. It's it's very, yeah, that that is very much just like, which proficiency? Oh, which one's left? <laughs> yeah, but but that's completely flavor. But Let's also, about... your arcane but... cannon is made of wood. Yeah, you go. There you go, because you have to, or you can use woodcarver's tools or smith's tools. It lets you use either one. Yep. Whatever. Um, I want to talk about how great this one is at level three, because at level three, one of the spells you get is shield. So you can be wearing medium armor and carrying a shield and then have the spell shield for a plus five to your AC already playing a build that's not getting into melee. Now we're talking, kids. Yep. Now you've got all of that cover from whatever archers that your DM throws at you, but yep. also Force Ballista. Yes. <laughs> oh, the the Eldritch Cannon. This it's is the whole so reason, cool. <laughs> the whole reason we came here. You've got three options here. You Let's talk about the one you're probably never going to use, and that's the Protector. Where... I mean, yeah. It gives you some temporary hit points. Um, I could see in certain scenarios where if you had to like defend a choke point, yeah. maybe you're using the well, protector. The, or... the protector well, the protector definitely comes in handy when you get up to later levels when you can have two cannons out at once. Oh, absolutely. That absolutely. is when the protector shines. But before um, that point, you're you're building a cannon, dude. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, the, the flamethrower is great where you're like, hey, check it out. I've got burning hands every turn. Like, that's, that's fun. And it's not just burning hands every turn. 
Yeah. It's burning hands every turn as your bonus action. Yes. Uh, but let's talk about the one you're really going to use. The Force Ballista. 120 foot range, 2d8 <laughs> force damage, and if the target's a creature, it's pushed five feet away. Mm-hmm. Here's my favorite thing, is there's no size designator on that. Nope. It knocks back the Tarrasque as easily as a kobold. And I know there are people. I know there are people out there that this bothers them, but me, it doesn't bother me. It's just funny it's and entertaining. Silly. Yeah. And that's what the artificer is for: is shenanigans. It is. Um, you you get the arcane firearm at fifth level. So again, <laughs> I said you took mending as one of your cantrips. You probably took firebolt as the other one, so you yep. could do damage. Which means on your turn, for your bonus action, you're shooting a force ballista. And then for your action, you shoot a firebolt. And you get to add some additional damage to this when you fire it. Mm -hmm. This is great. You created your own little tool to do extra damage on your firebolt. This is a class that can do a crap ton of damage from range. Oh, yeah. Oh, and let's not forget... Uh, let's not forget with the uh, the Eldritch Cannons, is that you can choose between it being little tiny, like a shoulder-mounted cannon or whatever, yep. or yep. being a proper cannon with legs, yes. because it does have a move speed. So if you're, I don't know, playing as a halfling artificer for some reason, you can just ride atop your cannon. You can. And I mean, it's, it, it's, it's got a slow move speed. Let, it does, let's be real. It does. <laughs> But it's so But it's fun. cool. <laughs> yeah. And then, you... like, if you have a warlock that has a tensor's floating disc, or, like, a wizard or a sorcerer that has tensor's floating disc, yep. and it's you and your cannon on tensor's floating disc. <laughs> yep. It's, it's amazing. Um, ninth level, your cannon now does more, more damage. And if you want, you can command your cannon to self-destruct. <laughs> Which, it's a stupid little thing. It doesn't do a ton of damage. But I'll tell you what. There are times where you're like, you know, I'd like all these things to take 3d8 force damage. There you go. There you go. You know what? We haven't had anything blow up in a long time. Cannon. I I gotta say, the, the artillerist is... I think it's the easiest one to play and honestly i i don't say that as a critique because mm-hmm. i'll always say if someone's never played D before and they're gonna play for their first time i'm probably gonna give them a, a human fighter non-variant mm-hmm. to play for their first character why because if you've seen lord of the rings you know what a human fighter looks like yeah there's so little to worry about you're gonna be really good at what you do and you're probably gonna have fun yeah. and it's a game it's important to have fun if you're brand new to this whole artificer thing, I might steer you towards that artillerist. Yep. I think it's the easiest to play. But if it's you're also friggin' awesome. Yeah. If you're a weird theater kid like us, yeah, and you haven't played D and D yet, artillerist. Just, just you'll have a great time. Do it. <laughs> just give it a shot. Make yeah. weird things that you think, like all those random props that you've thought about making. Uh, your artificer can just make them. Just do it. Yeah, I, I will say of the four uh, subclasses, I think it's the one you can say the least about. It's like, hey, you get to make this cannon. You can either make one that walks around on its own or it's handheld and it does cool things. Mm-hmm. But that's what I love about it is it's straightforward. Yes. And And that's, to an extent... That is how I felt at first looking at the Battlesmith. At first I thought the Battlesmith was very much was very much going to be just like, oh yes, straightforward. You're you're a smart guy that also has a good sword. Okay. But then you get into it more and uh it's more complex than you'd think. It is. Uh it, it's another one that gets shield at level yep. 3, which I is also always good. Love that it gets heroism. Um this is a nice low-level spell to help give some temporary hit points. Mm-hmm. Heroism is not to be overlooked 
Uh, level five, Branding Smite, Warding Bond. Those are good. Warding level Bond five. is Warding Bond is a wonderful, wonderful spell that you'll probably never use. But it's great in certain circumstances. Yep. Like, it can be good if you ever have an escort mission where you have to protect an NPC, mm-hmm. warding bond them. Yep. Let your artificer take that, that, that extra damage because this will help keep them alive. Um, again, like with the other ones, I'm not going to talk about anything beyond ninth level for the spells, but Conjure Barrage is a good spell. It, Conjure Barrage is a good spell, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, for the Battlesmith, you, you get something really cool where you gain proficiency with martial weapons and mm-hmm. if it's a magic weapon, you can use your intelligence mod instead of strength or dex yep. for attack and damage rolls. Very similar to how the Hexblade gets to use their charisma. Yes. So you're not likely to use this at lower levels, but when you eventually get a magical weapon, now you can be competent with it. Well, really- and, and uh, you actually can easily get access to this at lower levels because one of your first infusions that you can take Yep. is to augment your weapon by one that turns your weapon into a magical weapon which works with this yeah so you can be a competent combatant but we're really here for the steel defender yes because even like even though it says you can make your steel defender into basically whatever shape you want it to be the picture's a puppy and it you're is. gonna make a battle puppy. You're gonna make a robo dog. Um, <laughs> you are going to be Mega Man if you, you are, are a battle smith. You're, ma- you're making rush. And the thing is, at level three, what this little bastard can do is pretty good. It it hits real hard for seemingly no reason. And it does force damage which is one of the hardest damage types to avoid. Yeah. You like, you get extra attack at level 5. Mm-hmm. Um, when you hit uh, level 9, you get Arcane Jolt, which means if you hit something with a magical weapon or your Steel Defender hits something, uh, they can take some extra, extra force. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, or you can cause healing energy to happen mm-hmm. a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier. Which, and, and I will admit that does not make sense for how no. in any way, shape or form with how their casting works, that that would be a thing that happens, but I'm okay with it. Cause it's cool. It is. <laughs> and, and here's what I, what I really love about the steel defender. It, it gives a proficiency bonus equal to your bonus. It can't be surprised which yeah. means you can use this as a sentry when you're resting. Mm-hmm. Um, it it does, again, the force-empowered rend, it does quality damage yep. on a hit. It's, it's a D8 plus proficiency bonus force damage, mm-hmm. and it can repair itself three times a day for 2D8 plus proficiency bonus mm-hmm. uh, or to a construct or object within five feet of it. So yeah. if you're playing like an Eberron campaign, which would make sense because this came from Eberron, yeah. and you find a damaged terminal, you can use your Steel Defender to help heal that. Yeah, um, which then uh, which then can free you up to do other things because commanding your Steel Defender does take a bonus action, yeah. but it's your bonus action. Exactly. And, and as, a, as an Artificer, you're probably not doing a lot with your bonus action if you're a battlesmith. Yep. Um, the Steel it's... Defender also gets a really good reaction in deflect attack. Yes. It can impose disadvantage on an attack roll on a creature within five feet of it uh, as long as it's against not itself. So yep. it can't protect itself by opposing disadvantage. But it can but protect like anything that. else and anyone else, which is super yeah. nice. It's, it's, it's a defender. It's defending someone. Uh, odds are the artificer who created it. So and it's the the best thing, uh, in my opinion, the best thing about the Steel Defender is how is just how much it's all of its stats get beefed up by you just being a higher level. 
Yeah. It's one um, of the one of the better ways that that uh fifth edition scales things is just by scaling them off of your proficiency bonus. And I will say this, possibly the best thing about the sealed defender is if you played a beast master ranger yep you have this to thank for the update in tasha's yes because the minute this came out there was a question of why would you ever play a beast master ranger ever you wouldn't you would play this, a battlesmith yeah because this is vastly superior yep and and that was the like this was i think the the test of if something like that would really be broken or not. Yeah. I and agree. it turns out, and they learned very quickly that yes, they over nerfed animal companions. They did. And, and now you could have it where they act very similar to a steel defender. Yep. And it's great. Um, yeah. The, the, the artificer is, the artificer is not a class for somebody who wants to just show up. And when combat comes, Roll some dice, do some damage, move along. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, there's nothing wrong with that style of play. No, not um, at all. As much as I love Barbarians, um, my second favorite class, it's either Wizard or Paladin. I'm not sure which, but mm -hmm. I'm leaning towards Wizard right now. I've been playing one for a little while, and I really enjoy it. So I can play something with low hit points and more skills who is doing a lot of stuff outside of combat as opposed to Outside of combat, uh, I eat meat and look menacing. Like th that was what my barbarian did. But when combat rolled around, it was very clear what my job was. Right. Get in there, tank, and kill things. The artificer is a great class for someone who's more in that column B of, yeah. well, I want to be intelligent, but I want to be more than just rolling dice in combat. If you select skills that seem interesting to you and that also work along with your stat array you could have a lot of fun here you could create sort of a magical detective type character mm -hmm. with this because all those detective type skills are either intelligence or wisdom based and if if you go battlesmith with your detective that means you have a detective dog you have <laughs> scooby doo oh my god scooby doo <laughs> So we now need to put together a Scooby-Doo one-shot <laughs> just so that I can be Shaggy the Artificer. I I will do this. People <laughs> will have to... Here, but I will do this. I will run this. I will run a Scooby-Doo one-shot and I will create D&D &D classes for each of the characters, but I'm going to build the character sheets and y'all are going to play what I give you. And yes, is, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Shaggy's an Artificer or if he's a ranger, though, because that's I don't fair. know. How, I don't know how high his intelligence is, but he definitely has wisdom because the man can roll a dude. You're right. He can also make an amazing sandwich, and that's survival, which is wisdom based. It is. It is. <laughs> that makes a good looking sandwich, right? Yeah. God, do you remember trying to make a sandwich like stack a super that high, sandwich? and then getting yelled at for using too many things in the fridge, or too many pieces of bread? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That yeah. No. <laughs> yep. Well, I got I got a big freaking mouth. Like I I can I, I can borderline like, unhinge this jaw. So I I can handle all those uh quad decker sounds. He's actually a snake. Get him. Yeah. Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that gaping maw, it's that wolf mouth. No, but back onto the artifice. <laughs> <laughs> so i have nowhere to go from there i'm getting hungry <laughs> but with the with the artificer it really is that uh because the class is all about making things uh yeah. everything that you want to build off of this artificer it, including your character's personality and their ability scores and which skills it really is off of their skills more than anything else yeah. because that's going to dictate so many different things about your artificer you're going to be a character that's good both in and out of combat. And mm -hmm. that's the one thing. If you're playing a campaign where it's only combat, you could be an artillerist and still do really good, but I don't think you're going to get the full artificer experience. That is true. Um, the, the player's handbook characters, all those classes, I think 
any of those classes, archetype depending, can work no matter what campaign you're playing in. The example I'll always use is Dungeon of the Mad Mage because it's mm-hmm. a massive mm-hmm. epic dungeon crawl going from levels 5 to 20. I think anything in the player's handbook, you could find a subclass that works. Yep. Artificer is the one class where I go, I don't think you'll have fun here. Uh, because I mean, you're going to miss out on so much of what you yeah. do. Again, maybe with the artillerist or armorer, but again, maybe because you're not sneaking around much. So your no. armorer choices have been limited. Mm-hmm. And like, and you probably don't have too many options to like, all right, it's really important that we have someone post guard for us today. Yeah. So like that extra thing from the battlesmiths, uh, steel defender isn't going to be that helpful. Like, uh, yeah, the artificer really needs to be in a balanced campaign because so much of their, so much of the fun is in, I made this thing and here it is. See this wacky thing it does. Yeah. Uh, when I, I, if you don't have time to make that, like, eh. <laughs> for for printed modules, I think if you're playing Waterdeep Dragon Heist, uh, Curse of Strahd, or mm. Tomb of Annihilation in particular, I think you would have a great time. Oh, with yeah. a battles with, with not, not battles uh, with artificer. With Anyone an artificer. Of, yeah, I say battlesmith. So I'm like, you'd have a great time with battlesmith in any of them. But yeah, I I think the artificer can shine in any campaign like that. If you're going to play an artificer, talk to your DM. Make mm-hmm. sure there will be social interaction and ways for also, your team to shine. And also with your DM, make sure that the artificer is a thing that's there in that world because some DMs like to play lower magitech worlds and so like you don't want to show up being this whole like i build things in this world where no one builds things unless your dm is okay with that yeah that's true um i mean as always talk to your dm before starting Mm -hmm. any game you want to understand the world because if someone says hey my campaign is very inspired by game of thrones where there was some magic in game of thrones but it was very rare and you wouldn't mm-hmm. see any Magitech stuff, maybe they go, I don't allow artificers for that reason because it goes against the tone. Yeah. Um, know, the, know the table you're coming to, but if you're coming to a table that allows artificers and will embrace the role play part of it, you can be the star of the campaign. Absolutely. And your, your fellow players will love you for it. So don't be afraid of the artificer, but again, don't expect it to mm-hmm. be a wizard with a d8 hit die yeah it's about it's about those skills and infusions and and that's really all we have time to say about artificers i mean we said more about artificers than we have about most of the other classes because we were able to talk about every subclass which is cool uh but you know we are at time thank you so much for sticking with us through this artificer episode uh next week we will be doing the critical role invented blood hunter yes is an interesting one to talk about uh it's gonna be great uh thank you so much for for watching being here with us uh remember that our episodes are always up on the following saturday on our youtube channel at noon pacific time because i will remember to do it each week uh also we have our uh hilariously empty instagram page yep still still hilariously empty uh taunt us on it a lot of things happening on twitter (laughs) no because we both forget to check either of those a lot uh yeah, but yeah. we we do always check up on our facebook page i mean sometimes it's not really saying much because i uh, i i make racists angry and then i get in facebook jail and then i can't you post too? to our page but <laughs> yeah i i know uh so that happens i, I have but, actually got down on that because we need one of us to be able to run the page right <laughs> um yeah so that sometimes happens <laughs> maybe we'll add jamie as an admin just to help <laughs> We, we may have to just be like, hey, when I when I get put in jail again for a couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Being a good person makes racists mad and Facebook doesn't like that, apparently. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. By the way, if you're watching this, you're, you're probably not a racist. But if you are, go fuck yourself and never watch us again. Uh, uh God, I wish that was our button, but uh, we have a pattern to keep up. So Bjorn, do. what do we always say? Please do something nice for yourself this weekend. See ya. See ya.